So good morning, good morning everyone uh, to this online conversation uh, on digital education organized by the Unimed Network on e-learning and open education. Uh, today we will talk about virtual mobility and virtual exchange with a starting presentation by Francesca Helm. And then there will be um, other experiences by the members. Uh, Jasmine will present uh, what she's doing uh, um, at the technical, at the Polytechnical University in Palestine. And we at Unimed also are working on a pretty new project called Frames. Uh, so we will share some uh, advancements and plans uh, together with uh, Sara Pitarello from uh, Uni Collaboration. Of course, as always, do feel free to um, comment, ask questions, and share what you are doing. Uh, Francesca, up to you to decide if you want uh, participants to interact with questions or if you want to have questions uh, at the end. Uh, Francesca, the floor is yours. Francesca? T, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry. I couldn't unmute myself. Uh, no, fine. Please stop me if you have questions. And um, it's easier, I think, if we go um, along with your questions as, as I talk about some examples of virtual exchange and, and blended mobility. I think that's what, what Christina asked me to talk about. So thank you very much for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and see some, some old and new faces. Um, I'm going to talk about blended mobility and virtual exchange. So just to clarify some of the terms um, about virtual exchange, which I think perhaps it needs most clarification. So now the situation is very different from two years ago. <laughs> when we started, uh, well, three years ago, four years ago, when we started working on Erasmus Virtual Exchange. Now everybody knows what online teaching is in some form or another. Uh, when we first started, we had to explain, you know, the whole component of, you know, what synchronous video interactions are, whereas now it has become a normal activity. Um, the, the, the challenge now perhaps is distinguishing between different kinds of online education and exchange experiences. And so um, our idea of virtual exchange hasn't changed. It remains what it was before. Um, and it's about using technology for people to people dialogue. So it's about having students interacting with each other, having them engaging in interactions, um, but with the support of, of facilitators to make sure these interactions are meaningful and the facilitators can be educators or trained facilitators. Um, and the virtual exchange is a sustained, so sustained over time, um, and also a designed pedagogical process. So it's not just putting students together and telling them to interact. It is designed for pedagogical learning outcomes and designed for, stu for meaningful student interaction across differences, across geographic differences, across cultural differences, across whatever. And so technology is only an enabler. It, it supports um, the exchange, but it, it's, it's not, it, it's just there. It, it, it has a role, it influences the interactions, but it's not the main, the main point about it. And so in this sense, it's different from, you know, it's not streaming online lectures. It's not a MOOC. It's not, um, it distinguishes itself from several other forms of online interaction in the focus on student to student interactions and small group interactions. And so when we talk about and, and, and th this is, um, some of you may be familiar with it, this, this was the platform we used in the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange project, which emphasizes this idea of having small groups, having dialogue. So this was designed to have this circular format to enable this, you know, um, participation on equal terms, if you like, of participants. And, and this was a tool um, that also had a chat, text chat in the middle, so it allowed 
for people to write a summary of what is being said. It allowed people to see each other um, and was used specifically for dialogue programs above all. And it, it was the Solia platform. And so when we talk about blended mobility, what do we mean? So mobility, we think of mobility as student mobility, staff mobility, traveling from one country to another when this is possible in Europe, very much in the context of the Erasmus mobility program. Um, though, you know, a minority of students have this possibility, minority of students do have mobility, but um, never mind. Blended mobility combines or it should combine a physical mobility experience with a virtual exchange experience. So the kind of virtual exchange I've been talking about. And this can happen in several modalities, if you like. We have seen um, virtual exchange as a preparation for mobility. So it takes place before mobility. Um, sometimes it continues during mobility projects. Um, virtual exchange can be only post-mobility or it can also be post-mobility. So there's, there's a meeting first of all, and then activities continue uh, virtually after the mobility experience, or the virtual exchange can support a kind of debriefing after a mobility experience. Um, and then there are also some projects which are essentially virtual exchange projects, which include mobility for some of the participants in the virtual exchange so you know mobility if you like as, as as a prize for the participation in virtual exchange or a kind of selected mobility for some of the participants and so this is a combination but you know virtual exchange can exist also by itself so it doesn't have to be combined with mobility um, the european commission at the moment seems rather um interested <laughs> In, 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 in this blended mobility, because their focus is very much on mobility. So I want to give some examples to make it a bit more concrete so you understand what I'm talking about. Now, this was actually a, a, um, an Unimed project, no? Uh, Diremed. Um, and it was one of the projects that, that we engaged with in the Erasmus Virtual Exchange project. Um, sorry. And it, um, it, it was funded with, with other European funds and it was about intercultural dialogue and there were partners in Europe and partners in um, Southern Mediterranean countries. And we became involved um, with virtual exchange to prepare students for the mobility. So there was going to be a mobility for um, I can't remember how many students, Christina, maybe, I don't know. Um, a number, maybe like 10 students from each university, and they were all going to meet in Algeria for a mobility program. And so the idea was to have the students from Italy, Spain, France, uh, Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, to have them meet each other online and have some virtual exchange dialogue sessions before the actual face-to-face -face meeting in Algeria with the idea that they would um, get to know each other before the meeting, so they would kind of break the ice and develop some kind of, you know, relationship. So when they actually met physically in Algeria, then things could move more quickly, then, you know, they would already know each other, and so more could be achieved in the, in the physical space. Um, and so this is what we planned with the developers of the project. Um, but the virtual exchange component wasn't compulsory, so not all of the students took part in the virtual exchange component, um, but many of them did. And what, what the, the, the project coordinators reported to us is that they could see a difference in the students who had done the virtual exchange experience and those who didn't, because when they arrived, in, in Algeria, that the people who had seen each other before on virtual exchange kind of rushed to talk to each other. They felt like they knew each other and they were immediately out of the kind of national groups and, and, and the, the, you know, the people they had arrived with. So it was much easier, much quicker for them to engage with the other participants in, in the face-to-face -face meeting. Um, so this, this was one of the outcomes of, of that project. 
Um, another one is, is a project that we do at the University of Padua, which is where I work. And it's called eTandem, based on the idea of tandem learning in, in language learning. You know, tandem is the idea you have a partner, a conversation partner, and you speak each other's languages. And this is a way of, of learning um, each other's language. You have a kind of language exchange. The eTandem project was based on this idea, but it actually, um, the idea was to partner incoming students. So students who will be coming to Padova with local students. One, in order for the students to have a reference point, if you like, when they arrived in Padova, so to kind of, because sometimes in international mobility, there is, you know, the, the international students all stick together. There is an Erasmus bubble, if you like, and they don't interact with local students. Um, and this happens particularly with American students. This project began with American students. And because also they have their own university, they, they, don't, they never really meet and interact with Italian students. So this is one of the reasons why it started. But also the students in Italy wanted to have practiced the language. I think we have missed you. Or is it only me? Yeah, yes, we cannot listen yes. to. Yes, Christina. Yeah, same for me, Christina. Uh, we, we can't listen. Uh, Francesca, we can't hear you anymore. Me too. Now, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay, I removed my headset. <laughs> uh, that's weird. But okay. Unless I press. Usually it's better. Maybe you press the microphone, the mic in your headphones. Oops. Now, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, perfectly. Thank you. Okay, maybe I press the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so what was I saying? I was thinking to, to, to this thing that you mentioned before when mm -hmm. people have a virtual exchange and then they meet physically and, and they really have a feeling that they met before. And, and Yasmin, you may also remember when we met in Palestine with so many participants of the virtual yes. exchange yes. activities. And it, it's been really funny. And people were just saying, oh, we just met before and that virtual exchange project. Oh no, it was that one. Ah, uh, really? You see, it, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and then sometimes amazing. it kind of blurs. You feel like you did meet. Um, mm. It's happened with me now in with Waidehi, for example, in the E project. I thought I knew. I thought it almost felt like I kind of knew her really well, but we'd never actually met. Mm. And I think that's powerful. No, it it, it is a very powerful. Um, a powerful phenomenon that people very often don't believe. People don't believe that you can build a relationship um, online yeah. with, with, with people. And, you know, obviously if, if you're just lecturing online, then, you know, students don't build relationships. <laughs> so it, it's, it's what you do online that, that makes the difference. Um, yes. Okay, so, so this e-tandem, this was another example. Sorry, I'm trying to make it big, but I can't. Okay. Um, and this has been carrying on for like um, six, seven years now. And we know that the, um, it makes a big difference for the students who come to Padova. We also do it for outgoing students, try and partner them with students in the university where they, where they are going to. And also in, in times of COVID, this has been valuable. Some, some of the students didn't go on mobility, um, but they still managed to have language practice. Other students did, go on mobility and were stuck and felt very isolated. And so having somebody in, in the country was very important for them because they really needed to understand what was happening and the information and the regulations, which weren't always translated. Um, another project is, um, this was a, a, one of the first um, virtual exchanges that, that the Sharing Perspectives Foundation organized. So they were our partners in Erasmus Virtual Exchange and you know now do kind of large-scale virtual exchange dialogue projects 
But one of the first projects they did was called Europe on the Edge, and it was funded by the European Citizenship Foundation, I think. Um, and this was a blended exchange in the sense that the students, so they, they developed content for the course in collaboration with um, eight or 10 different universities. So each university, and Padova was a partner on this, provided um, three 20 minute video lectures. So we provided content for this virtual exchange program on the themes that they had asked us to talk about. Um, in return for our work in contributing the lectures, we could have um, 10 or 20 students take part in this program once the program had been developed. So, um, you know, th they put together the short video lectures, um, then they recruited our students, so our students signed up for the program. Uh, sharing perspectives organized the program, so they organized the students in groups and the, each student was in a group with one student from each of the other university partners. So um, I can't remember which countries they were from, but they were all from different European countries. So they met every week for two hours and they had dialogue about the content of the lectures and about their feelings and experiences on the topic. Um, and they also did a collaborative research project. So together they developed a survey which each student was responsible for getting people in their communities to complete the survey. Um, a researcher kind of elaborated the data for them. And the idea was that the results of this survey would then be presented at various European institutions. So there was going to be a one week um, study trip to Brussels to present the results of the research and to get to know the institutions better. And so they selected uh, one or two students from each university, okay? And they were selected on, in terms of their performance in the course and in terms of how many, how many responses they managed to get to the survey. I mean, they had a series of criteria. And then the small group went to Brussels. They also made a video about the exchange, their experience in Brussels, which they shared with the other participants. So this is an, another kind of blended exchange. It was developed with European funding, collaboratively by a lot of universities, but coordinated by this NGO Sharing Perspectives Foundation. And, 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 and one of them, Sophie, has written a case study about this in this, um, in this open access book that we've published recently. Uh, I see. Um, I think I've said everything. Yes. And then the last example I'll give is, is this NICE project. And again, this is funded by, this was funded by the European Commission. It was a key action. Something sad will correct me, will tell what it is. Um, and it was a network for intercultural competence to facilitate entrepreneurship. And so again, the idea is that there were eight different universities working together and they developed the content in the form of a series of um, online modules. Um, and then the students were organized into small teams. So each virtual team, in this case, they were smaller. They had five or six participants, again, from the different universities. And here it was organized around a, a global challenge. So what the teams had to do was develop an innovative business idea in a team to solve the global challenge that they had chosen. And again, it was blended in that they organized a virtual a, a summer school. This is COVID. With COVID, it became a virtual summer school. Originally, it was a physical summer school um, where a selected number of students from each university would meet and continue building their skills and refine their business idea. Um, and so in, in a sense, this was similar to, to the previous project. It was blended in the sense that there was a virtual there was a physical mobility for just a number of the participants and it was funded by a european project the funding for this has ended um, but seven of the eight consortium members are continuing the project now even without the funding they are they are providing the resources and getting students to take part 
And so I just like to say that in, in these kind of models of virtual exchange, you know, it, it, because things are virtual, they don't come free. And um, as, as you know very well, yes, yes, me in particular, um, you know, developing a virtual exchange syllabus, creating materials takes time and it costs. Yeah. Then you also need to think about the management of the project, how you enroll students, you need to organize them into groups. The, the, you know, you need time, materials to support the integration into a course, you need to liaise with partner teachers or virtual exchange providers, assignments need to be developed, students need to be evaluated, then if there is the mobility that needs to be planned and that takes a cost and, and it takes a good part of the cost as well. Um, you also need to develop the staff involved, so whether it's the teachers or, or, or the facilitators, they need um, training, observation, coaching. If, if you're using facilitators, then you need to pay facilitators for the dialogue sessions and then as well as the mobility. Um, but all too often, you know, people consider that the funding for the mobility, but everything else takes time if you're going to have a quality virtual exchange experience. And so in terms of what we have learned from all of these experiences, um, I mean, I, I think, okay, this, this demand from the students has been increasing, you know, particularly obviously with COVID, but even before as students, initially they don't know what it is and there wasn't perhaps much interest, but then as they hear about the other students' experience, interest grows and they become more interested. Um, for example, in, in, in the NICE project, I think we had 20 places for students from Padova it was advertised through the International Relations Office and there were nearly a hundred applications from students in various departments. Um, these kind of you know, activities require coordination between international office staff and academic staff. Um, but very often we kind of work in silos. Now you work in your department, the international office is quite separate and you know, the, the, there is, universities aren't very good at, at working collaboratively between departments, at least in my experience. In terms of the, the mobility for some model, I think it can be an incentive for participation, but it can also be demotivating for the students, for example, who are not selected, if they wanted to go. I mean, not everybody can or wants to go, but you know, if somebody wants to go and they're not selected, then they can be demotivated. And this then becomes a problem for the group because the group, um, you know, the, 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 the group's experience depends on everybody's contributing to the group. Um, quality virtual exchange needs strong pedagogic design and a high level of coordination, um, because really coordinating multiple universities and students in different institutions requires a lot of work. So it needs support staff in terms of teaching staff, facilitators, administrative staff. Um, the way I see it, and perhaps some other researchers of internationalization, I think various models of virtual exchange and blended mobility can make part of a kind of internationalization portfolio, if you like. So we can have, you know, blended mobility, teacher led initiatives, ready made initiatives, a variety. So virtual exchange, you know, offers many different formats, and, and all of these can be supported in what could be defined as a portfolio of. of internationalization opportunities. Um, <laughs> this, um, you know, I talked about the Sharing Perspectives project where the universities contributed lectures. Now, if, if they had listened to us also before COVID, um, they would know that by looking at, at the statistical data, we found that um, the students only watched kind of up to five, 10 minutes of the recorded academic lectures. They weren't particularly engaging and students very often didn't watch the whole lectures. And so in their model, sharing perspectives, um, in the subsequent models, which were only virtual exchange, what they did is they worked with a professional company in developing um, short videos, which, you know, which provide a good amount of information, quality information, but they have been professionally prepared. They don't keep, they, they're generally shorter than 20 minutes. And then these can be accompanied by readings and, and other materials. Um, dedicated staff is required, you know, if, if the university wants to have strong integration of virtual exchange in their institution. 
Quality control is important. So, you know, very often, even at my university, we've had, you know, virtual exchange experiences or what on paper appears to be a virtual exchange, but actually, you know, has been just putting reading texts online or aren't really virtual exchange experiences. And then I think virtual exchange is scalable. So we, you know, we can have large numbers of students take part in virtual exchange experiences. And we saw that in the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange project. And in particular with, with the, the models, ready-made models, I call them by sharing perspectives, they actually managed to, to have a large number of students take part. And it was very highly valued by the students because they interacted with people from a really wide range of contexts. So we had students in you know, Italy, Sweden, Ireland, Syria, Tunisia, Palestine, Morocco, all in the same dialogue group. And that is really powerful for students. And, um, but again, this comes at a cost and, and the costs go down if there are more students participating, but either we need an organization like the European Commission to, to support this multilateral projects or universities need to invest in this and, and, and they don't always want to. And I think that's it for me. <laughs> Thanks, Francesca. Thanks. Um, well, I have a quick question, but one in, in your experience, uh, those types of initiatives, do you think that they come from um, professors, uh, e-learning centers or from the international relation offices? Well, if an university want to start a virtual exchange projects, where do they start normally? <laughs> because I have a feeling that it's always an enthusiastic professor who bring the initiative forward. Um, I, I, you know, I think it depends from university to university. I think you need, I think it needs to come from all sides, really. I think there needs to be bottom up, um, but I think there also needs to be top down. So there needs to be some incentive support. I think there needs, you know, expertise like from e-learning centers because, you know, educators need support in this. Um, I've been doing it as, as an enthusiastic educator for more than 20 years and now after maybe 20 years the university, my university has finally developed a virtual exchange strategy and is trying to, to, to do this at institutional level so it, it, it takes a long time um, and some people may start and then become demotivated if, if they don't have support from the university because if, if you're doing a, a teacher to teacher exchange, it requires, it requires a lot of work. So, you know, it's in addition to teaching your course, you have a lot of extra work. It's more fulfilling. I really like it. So, I, you know, I would always do it, but um, there is a lot of pressure on you. So I think, I think it needs to be kind of top down, bottom up. Yes. <laughs> yes, Lee, what do you think? Yes, I agree with you, Francisca, because um, when I when we start the project at uh, PTUK, actually, I have finished the two courses, uh, training courses offered by the Uni Collaboration, the basic training course and the next one, which is about the TEPA project. So at the end of the TEPA project, they told me that um, the, the teacher or the professor who will participate in the virtual exchange project should be uh, implement uh, one of the courses or um, to be motivated to work with other colleagues from European uh, or from your uh, union collaboration, uh, other partners, I mean, from Europe. Um, and what I have actually made that I, I just need to, 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 to put PTUK on the, on the first floor and let our colleagues from PTUK to participate. So I just uh, talk with the professor Khaled and I told him that there is a project which is telecollaboration work and he really actually uh, told me go ahead Yasmin and try find and think which uh, what 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 the, who is will will success the, the 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 work of that project and we think together to for the the professors from different departments who will be really work so hard because it's an extra work for the, the teachers in the, our university. You know, the, the academic load 
the number of uh, courses that uh, each uh, professor uh, taught at PTUK. So we need someone who really interested and really motivated to do that project. So we find the, our uh, colleague from the language department, uh, Professor uh, uh, Dr. Nadia Hamad, who will uh, teach, who, who teach English course uh, for for different uh, students from different faculties. And uh, she told me she would like to work with me uh, with other European partner. And we um, we work together. I do not want to talk now because I would like to share my presentation and I will. Uh, let you uh, to, to have more information about the experience through my presentation. So if there is no other question to uh, Dr. Francisca, let me to, to start. I just have uh, a question, please, for uh, Francisca, please. Uh, have you noticed the major of the students makes a difference? Um. Have you uh, yeah. tried different categories of students from science, from engineering, from... Uh... We have. So in, in the, the NICE project, the last one I talked about, there were students from all different disciplines and, and that was intentional. They want to have an interdisciplinary project as well. Um, so bringing students from different disciplines to address this global challenge. And that has been successful. Interestingly, um, another project that we've been doing, um, the climate movements, again, it's, it's a sharing perspectives exchange. And we've had my students, students in Italy, Ireland, France, and all the students from France were from chemistry and engineering, and students from Palestine, who I think were from more from social sciences. And, and my students were saying that they had, oh, it was so difficult to understand the French students, because they came from chemistry and engineering, and, and they were they were complete with, with the Palestinian students, we had a lot in common and, and we could understand each other. But with the engineering and, and chemistry students, it was a kind of a different, and, and again, I think that's really important. So I, I do think, um, and the students, the French students were doing it to develop their English, but also, you know, these transversal skills. So the ability to communicate, um, the ability to, um, work in you know multilingual multicultural groups so it, it, it works and I think the students find it difficult but I think that's how it should be no <laughs> they, with, they need uh, yeah with, with these different projects have you tried to come up with a, a success matrix or successful matrix and a failure matrix that will help to choose the best instructors, the best students from the beginning. Have you tried to come up with these matrices? But not quite a matrix. I know the international office selects the students for this. I don't know what their criteria are. They ask students to write a motivation letter. Um, and so I think I think their their criteria is different than the, the criteria that uh, get produced really after the project is over. So there might be some uh, remarks, some points, some... Uh, so you did not do anything like this with these matrices? No, for, with matrices, example, but in, in the virtual exchange, in, in the EVE project, one of the things we discovered that is that it's important for students to understand before um, what they are doing and how much they need to be involved so this is both for students and professors it's very important that they have an understanding of the project they are going to take part in so we students need to have a certain level of language but it's you know it doesn't have to be fluent students need to be motivated and interested students need to understand what they are going to do they need to understand the commitment that is required um, the, these are the main things, not 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 certain yeah. qualities, because then the, the you know the, the skills they develop as they take part in the project. So usually, after finishing the project, you produce a document or a report, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a report. Yeah. So, with the, in these reports, did you include any any of these matrices? Well, I, so I think this I, question. I, go together with uh, another question in the chat by Pat, uh, who is the director of the 
um, research group on educational technologies at the University of Murcia. Uh, she would like to know if you have information about satisfaction of participants and blended experiences. So the, all those follow-up analysis that you do. But the blended experiences, I um, I know about them. I don't. I, I haven't been doing the research on these. I did my research is on the virtual exchange only experiences, um, except for the for the DiraMed and the satisfaction um, was comparable to the, the 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 satisfaction in the virtual exchanges. We have the publications. I can share the the reports from the Erasmus virtual exchange. They haven't published yet the final one. Um, but I, I can share the, the 2019 report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alessandra, I've seen... Yes, I, um, actually my question was connected to your first question, Christina, and was about um, how to you know, boost this kind of exchanges. And uh, I think also the Language Center has a role in um, you know, in supporting this kind of project, um, I guess. So I just wanted to add this because I mean, as I work in the language center, and uh, we try to do a lot of this kind of uh, uh, mini project. Not so, I mean, not so big as in Padua because they, I know Francesca has been working a lot on the European projects. So. Uh, we at Politalico, we have smaller projects, but uh, if she can add something more about the support of the Language Centre, maybe. I mean, I think in, in, in part of the Language Centre has, hasn't has been part of this. So these projects I've been doing through political science. Oh. Um, the e-tandem was, was done with the Language Centre, but the others haven't. But I do think the Language Centre is, is, you know, is, is a very good place where these projects can be supported. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you, Francesca. I'll get the links to well, the report. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, can I ask a question? Um, okay. Uh, my question was, um, is it possible, do you think, to introduce uh, the, the meeting of uh, virtual exchange in the specific discipline? For example, I teach uh, a school psychology, so one possibility to be to prepare a project to work with other uh, students of other university. And if it's not so easy to find the facilitator, do you think it will be possible to have a student tutor, so to have a training for some student uh, that are big, uh, a level of English, at least uh, I get then the other one can be a sort of a coach, a sort of peer tutoring uh, in, uh, so because as I, as I can understand, I just read something that yes, not to include the, the teacher in the meeting of uh, virtual exchange. So one possibility is to have at least one student in some way coach a student with a good English level in any group. So to, um, as you say, to um, implement uh, the template in a better way. Uh, what would you think? See, Sergio, the, the, this is in, in the part of a strategy paper, actually, what, what they have decided to do is to um, have some people, students or administrative staff doing the facilitator training. Um, and, and, and here we're talking about the, the Solia dialogue facilitator which I think is a very powerful training because it trains people in, um, in supporting the kind of dialogue and interactions which can lead to intercultural learning, to students really learning from each other. Then there is a kind of, you know, I think teachers can be involved in certain kinds of exchanges and, and in certain aspects of the exchange. So that, that's a kind of another different model, if you like, but that can also be combined with facilitators working with student groups. Um, and so, in, in, for example, in Padova's new strategy, they are putting some um, funds and the idea is to have students and administrative staff trained to become facilitators so they can be used to support um, the student interactions. And then they're also investing in professional development for the teachers, for the professors, 
So then they can find a partner professor either in the same discipline or even in a different discipline because that you can create an interdisciplinary project for any, I mean, I think for any discipline, but, and again, I'll share a book with some case studies um, for you. And then the other figure that we're investing in is kind of le um, learning technologist or pedagogical designer, you know, like, like Yasmin in the e-learning center, because, you know, as she said, she, and, and she will explain now, I think having a, 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 a reference person that knows about technology and also about the kind of pedagogic design of these projects is really important. So that's the other kind of figure that the university is going to invest in because at the moment we don't really have many of, of this kind of person. But I'll, I'll get the links and share with the resources. Yeah, thank you. Will. Um, thank you. Because the idea is that it's possible to try just some pilot experience also without the founding of a European project, but just to have a, some agreement, because I think you just need an agreement, but with different university to, as you said, to involve your student in this kind of activities. Mm -hmm. Is there any other comments or questions? Or will you just mean, uh, tell us about yes. your experience? Um, Golia, sorry, thanks for sharing. Uh, do you want to talk or can I read your question in the chat? Um, asking about how diversity and intercultural issues have been seen through these experiences. Uh, and how the students, students and working style or habits have been seen. Uh, again, there, there's so, so much that could be said about it. It's a very big question. So again, I, 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 Gola, I can share with you the, the impact reports because that I think gives an idea of the kind of intercultural, the diversity and intercultural issues. Um, yeah, thanks because uh, in the, Sorry, I had a little bit cold. My voice is not so clear, but no uh, I just uh, uh, wanted to know it because if the mobility can be provided between like uh, countries with diff with a big gap in cultural issue, then it could be important to also to figure out how these working uh, in a group with the participants and students can work uh, efficiently and yeah, in this case. Again, here, I mean, I, I, I do think the facilitators are key in supporting the students in this and, and, and bringing to light, you know, the, the intercultural experiences and differences and also language. You know, they can also support different levels of, of language in the project. So here I've shared a link to the okay, impact report you. and then I'll thank share some you. the book of case studies. Thank you. This means. Yeah. So I will now share my screen. Um, no, today you I find want... how to have the permissions. I have done nothing. Okay, good. Did, did you see my presentation, Christina? Yes, and all? yes. okay. Um, today I want to talk about the experience um, we have um, at the 2020 and 2020. Um, between Palestine Technical University and EFEC University at um, Belgium. Uh, we designed a course, uh, it was the title of the course, English for Business. Uh, our participants are from uh, Palestine Technical University, from the engineering faculty and from uh, finance faculty. Um, it was about 13 students from PTUK and the 16 students from EFEC. Uh, also, the students are from different departments, from finance, from uh, um, business department and uh, other. Um, the course was English for business course, as I mentioned. Here, I would like to talk about the objective of that course and the objectives of the uh, collaboration. We would like to uh, be uh, aware that the, the target of the project is, to, is academic but we give the student the chance to collaborate and to uh, reach the, 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 let's say the objective of the virtual exchange uh, target. But we keep in, my, in our mind that the academic uh, 
uh, target is in our mind because we are an academic institution and we are in a university. So we should be aware that the students will still have um, be uh, being aware that they should be participated in and be committed, being committed and being um, uh, participated in a very, very uh, well um, orientation and in a very well, um, let's say, commitment. Um, the students um, uh, have an op have an op opportunity to develop and to practice and demonstrate their communication skills and online collaboration skills. They uh, develop uh, we we develop the participants' uh, academic and social skills and enhance their ability to self learning, and that is very important in our institution to let our students to to be motivated in self learning and motivated in work uh, for searching for the information, searching for anything they need to 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 learn. Uh, develop intercultural competences. Also, they practice uh, international online collaboration and teamwork. They apply uh, digital technologies and time management and debating skills as well. They provide performance reviews and they give feedback. And feedback is a very important thing that our students should uh, know how to do it with the other teammates from different countries, from different departments. Uh, and they promote professional skills and be ready for an online job interview for a future career. Because as I mentioned, we have um, a part of the 13 students from finance de uh, department, uh, finance uh, college. So they, uh, th this uh, point is very important for him to, to be prepared very well before uh, uh, before graduate and before uh, for preparation for the online interview uh, for future uh, career. Also, uh, some of our students uh, who finished the bachelor degree in Palestine, in South Palestine, they are looking for scholarships after. Uh, after they finish uh, to go uh, abroad and study uh, outside Palestine. So it's important uh, to, to know how they should be prepared very well before they uh, be uh, being involved in an online interview, maybe for career, for scholarship, for any other thing. Um, also, at the end of the, the project and at the end of the course, the students were, uh, were uh, be able to prepare a final digital uh, personal portfolio. And I will share with you at the end of the presentation the Success Stories magazine that we have prepared together, me and with the students, to, uh, write, uh, to write what they benefit and what uh, the, the, they summarize in their own words the experience. Um, Yes. Um, yes. Uh, actually, the project timeline wa uh, was about six weeks. We start uh, on February and we end uh, on uh, April 2020. Um, the, the, the team, the, the meetings, we organize a lot of meetings between uh, our students and our partner. The, the total number of meetings we have uh, scheduled is about 20 Zoom meetings because uh, we start at uh, February, but we have prepared ourselves before that date because we prepare the course, the, the material. Um, we try to find something attractive, something um, very, very um, pedagogic uh, designed. We, we are very, very aware for the content to be designed very well for our students and our partners, colleagues from the FK University. So we design a lot of meetings before the, the beginning of the, of the project. We have se seven, uh, uh, Zoom meeting with our partner Jean Francois from EFEC uh, University, and we have about 13 uh, Zoom meeting uh, between our students. Uh, we make uh, a lot of uh, orientation days to 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 prepare our students to to give them information about the project, the idea, the terms. As Francesca mentioned in her in her presentation, what is the the virtual exchange? Uh, what is the objective of the project? Uh, what we we will now reach uh, about the mobility, real mobility, uh, blended mobility, and so on. Uh, we, uh, with regard to the tools we have used, we used our Moodle platform as the platform to implement the uh, online course. So we host our uh, uh, participants from EFIC University with our PTUK University at our Moodle platform, uh, at our PTUK Moodle platform. We um, we, as I mentioned before, we took into consideration both the pedagogical and technological concepts to make uh, the course attractive and uh, interactive as possible, and also raising awareness of uh, global issues. 
Here is a screenshot of the, the, the cover page of the first, uh, uh, the first um, uh, page of the course. It's uh, between, uh, we, we here put the, the, the photo of uh, Bethlehem city in Palestine to represent uh, one of the main uh, a famous uh, church uh, for uh, in our country to let our students to be evolved a little bit about the intercultural uh, issues and intercultural aspects and let them to be motivated from the beginning of the course to read more and to learn more in this uh, course. Um, with regard to the students picking the criteria, we were so selective when we picked our students and participants, me and my colleague from the language department because uh, it's the first time uh, for our uh, students at the PTUK University to be involved in such projects uh, that uh, will be from different uh, country and it will be virtual it's the first time so we will be aware for the uh, we will be very very selective to choose the students because we need to choose the students who are really motivated to, to be involved in that project. And that is very important. And also we uh, choose the students who are shy, but have uh, in, from their inside, the, they are motivated, but they are shy. So we are working on that kind of students to let them do not be shy, to ask the break, to let them be evolved and to speak in a very confident manner and in a, in a very confident way and let them, it's something that is very difficult for a university student who can participate in such a project and they should be trained very well before the beginning of the project to let them feel comfortable at the beginning of the project and to be involved easily and very, very uh, comfortable, as I mentioned. So we try our best to motivate them to, to be critical thinkers, keep away from single story, stereotype pattern, and uh, also um, assumption, prejudice, and discrimination also. Um, with regard to the uh, activating new strategy in the learning process, yes, we um, we were not so familiar with the acting like leaders because because as I mentioned, the PTK students are uh, it's it's our it's uh, the first time that PTK students participate in such a project as I mentioned. So they are not so familiar with acting like leaders and talk to people from other cultures. And this project opened wide doors to let them act like once. They managed to schedule Zoom meeting, uh, gather reports, and finalize them by them by their own. And they write uh, their own, as I mentioned, success stories, which I will show uh, at the end of the presentation. Also, we exchange uh, technological tools between the two uh, uh, universities. EFIC and PTUK teams exchange latest and updated uh, tools in the learning process, such as Slack, Genially, and the latest model plugins model because we used the extra uh, and the new technologies, uh, new plugins inside model like the H5B, uh, H5B, H5B plugin uh, that they have a lot of con uh, interactive activities inside it. So we use uh, most of the activities uh, from this plugin, and we use for sure Zoom for synchronous meetings and. Um, Thanks to Erasmus Plus because uh, they host um, uh, two uh, facilitation set sessions and dialogues between the two teams, uh, and that was very very important to uh, orient uh, and uh, to um, guide the students in the uh, project as whole. Uh, we'll design the curriculum. The content were carefully designed, implemented in a simple and interactive and progressive method. Um, now I would like to talk about the benefits. The benefits are not just for the PTUK students, actually. It was for also the tutors uh, and for the technicians. Um, for students, it's a good chance to let the students entry into the virtual exchange world. Uh, enhancement in using technology in the educational process model. Raise awareness of Erasmus Plus and virtual exchange projects and let them access the website of the Erasmus Plus to let them motivated to see how, how the projects are uh, on that uh, website and they to read and benefit from the reports from the uh, other uh, participants magazines, published the success stories and so on. Accepting others regardless racial and culture. And that is very important for our students because a lot of Palestinian students 
after finishing bachelor degree, as I mentioned, they were looking forward to, to travel abroad and to, to continue the graduate studies outside Palestine uh, if they obtained the scholarship or uh, uh, evolved in international projects. So if they are aware for that issues, they, it will let them be involved easily and um, quickly to be understand other culture uh, issues. Uh, for TOTAS and technicians, uh, course uh, outcome uh, from the virtual exchange are embedded in P2K uh, database courses. The course are designed, as I said, uh, very well, and uh, I think it could be used for other uh, uh, from uh, for other uh, let's say yeah, departments. If, the, if any other departments can benefit from the course content, from the exercises we have. Uh, uh, put inside model so it could be usable reusable again for other courses uh, in the university uh, maybe in the uh, english department uh, for an english department or other uh, finance department uh, also a uh, cross-cultural experience uh, for me and my colleague uh, also fostering lifelong learning through meeting experts from the union collaboration and other sponsors um, and i'm very glad to meet all uh, the contributors on the project and to introduce myself and to to uh, uh, to to be introduced to him and i also i will benefit from him and there there will be actually an um, um, a circle that we all work together in, uh, in the same field let's say strengthen the relationship among the participants and affiliation to ptuk um with regard to the recommendations, um, actually, um, after I finished the experience uh, on April 2020, uh, I would like to increase the participation number of PTUK totals in the offered courses by union collaboration training. So I just, um, uh, me and Dr. Khaled, um, send an email to our colleague inside PTUK University and uh, put uh, a criteria, locally criteria, to uh, asking him uh, whom is um, uh, is interested to to repeat the experience or to le to be to being involved in the uh, online training offered by the nuclear liberation. So I I think that um, between three to seven re registered to have the online training course. One of them, I guess, uh, is from Hebron. The the other uh, university branch in Hebron are Al Arub, and I think. He has participated in the training session, so he uh, he called me different times and told me he really enjoyed the two training courses, the basic training and the advanced training. And um, I think he make a, a collaboration with other European uh, university uh, in Germany. I I, I think. Uh, the second the recommendation is increase the awareness towards the updated issues all over the Mediterranean area. Reinforce cultural exchange by physical exchange through allocating funds from different sponsors, and it is one of the uh, difficulties we faced here in Palestine. That we would like to to have a real a blended mobility, like Francesca, what uh, she mentioned. But actually, we stopped working on that issue because of the COVID nineteen. Everything changed. All the courses switched to to be only remotely and online. So we do not focus on that issue at that moment because you know that after the finished project everything is online and no travel and uh, our dream become a little bit uh, <laughs> become slow and slow <laughs> at the first floor of the, the working of the project so i hope in the future that we have a chance to to have a blended or real mobility to let our students start with virtual exchange projects and then achieve the blended mobility out or the real mobility, and that I think uh, both uh, both the strategy, the the virtual exchange project, and the the blended mobility will be um, will complete each other, and the experience will be full experience if if they are the two uh, strategies are reached. I think the benefit will be more and more because uh, I have actually participated previously in uh, in the workshop that uh, Christina come in Palestine and we met uh, in, uh, in Ramallah city and after that we actually go uh, travel to, to Rome and I met all, all the colleagues from uh, Unimed and so it was really a very very uh, good experience so I think that uh, for the students it will be the same experience hopefully. Uh, give access to paid tools such as Zoom uh, to let students use them effectively. And actually, after the project finished, our PTUK University uh, participated and licensed the Zoom uh, uh, 
uh, application. So our students already use the application freely now. Uh, encourage students to share the experience among their peers by publishing booklet, a photo, album, and videos. And that actually have uh, done by our um, students because they already share the success stories. Um, I don't know, Christina, if I have time to share the magazine quickly. Um, sure, you have a link? Yes, I have a link. I will, um, just a moment. Yeah, here we go. Here is the magazine. We, uh, I have designed, uh, I designed the magazine with my um, colleague and uh, my participants uh, from PTUK. It is about the uh, experience from PTUK uh, students. Um, and the uh, here is the cover of the um, magazine. And we try to use uh, colorful uh, colors because uh, the students like to be motivated all the time and uh, to, to write uh, their own words in, uh, in uh, let's say, in very expressive words. So here is the first participant, uh, Ahmad, the second one, Shamil, and Raya. And as I explained, all the participants are from engineering faculty and from finance uh, faculty. Lujain and uh, Muaz, Muhammad, Sajida, and Fayha, Minas, and Mais, and Yazan. Here is my success story also because I really benefit from the project and I, I would like to share my experience with other uh, colleagues. And here are some of the photos we have uh, during the orientation days before the project begins. And the, my colleague Nadia from the English department also wrote her uh, experience. And here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, all the materials I'll share. Thank you, Jasmine, for also for all your enthusiasm. And, and I wonder, well, I know that this experience came before the pandemic, and this has been yeah. also helpful to face yes. the initial, um, well, to increase the resilience towards online learning, to facilitate uh, the move, the shift to online learning. Yeah. I wonder how we will be able to keep this enthusiasm now that students are really bored and fed up with online digital things. And um, do, do you think that there is an impact of the pandemic on virtual exchange as well? Uh, for, from my opinion, I think that students will be motivated after the pandemic if there is a blended mobility. Because the, 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 the whole, uh, the previous year and the current year actually let our students feel a little bit bo bored because they do not go to the campus, do not um, see uh, our, uh, the teachers, the professors, the colleagues, the students, do not see each other physically. So that because of that, I think the students a little bit feel um, depressed, bored, and uh, all of them, uh, they are really motivated the, at the beginning of uh, the autumn uh, term or semester because they will be back to face-to-face -face, uh, mode of uh, learning. So I think if, uh, if we can, um, uh, working together, let's say between uh, Erasmus Plus and other um, uh, collaborators from the European Commission to work on, let's say, to, to offer a budget for um, blended mobility. We can start thinking of virtual mobility, then we can move through a blended mobility and that will motivate the students to participate online first and we can manage and we can test and we can put a criteria for the, uh, for the students to be selected, to be involved in that project. For example, if the students are really highly committed to join, to participate virtually, then we'll be uh, blended mobility, I think it will be a very good plan to work on that uh, kind of a project because you will see the progress of the project virtually, then you can decide if the real mobility will, will, uh, will uh, meet the, the target output, let's say. I think uh, of that. Yeah, yeah, indeed. 
well, if we still have time, um, we would like to share uh, an initiative, a project which is now um, coordinated by Unimed about virtual exchange. As you know, Unimed supports virtual exchange as an opportunity to expand opportunity uh, for international cooperation, intercultural exchange, uh, and of course, as you well know, not as an alternative uh, to physical mobility, but yeah, indeed as a way to expand opportunities for intercultural and international dialogue. Um, we are now working on this project, which is called Frames, and among the many aims, we are trying to define different scenarios for the integration and accreditation of virtual exchange within the university. So the project is just started, well, just started, started in March. Uh, I think that we have never presented it before, right, Sara? This would be like the first time. So it, this is not a formal presentation. We do not even have a logo for the project. Uh, however, uh, we would like to share with you those scenarios that we have uh, been uh, defining. Um, mainly to have your feedback and, and to know um, if we are on the right way. And I think that offering and defining possible scenarios for integration, and especially for accreditation, would be very useful for, for everyone and for other universities who are starting those uh, types of, of activities. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, I have indeed some slides. Uh, this project is titled FRAMES, which stands for Fostering Resilience Through Accredited Mobility for European Sustainable Higher Education Innovation. Uh, it's an Erasmus Plus strategic partnership project, so it's focused mainly on uh, Europe and the European higher education system. Uh, however, I think that there will be many results which can be transferred and used also in the Mediterranean uh, region. So Sarah, I will just give a few information about the project and then uh, you can uh, discuss about what we are doing with the scenarios. Um, so a, this project aims to foster and harmonize implementation and accreditation of blended mobility uh, among higher education institutions in Europe. Uh, we will build capacity of the international, um, we'll build capacity uh, on the integration and accreditation of virtual mobility, um, there will be a multiplication mechanism to expand, extend the project results in uh, many other universities um, in, in Europe and beyond. Um, and we will work on a blended mobility integration frameworks, framework to um, introduce virtual mobility in the interna internationalization strategy of the universities. Partners in this project are Unimed Uni Collaboration, the Shared Perspective Foundation, the University of Girona, of Limerick, and the University of Siena. And we will produce four main things. Those scenarios that I've mentioned before, an online training for professors and uh, uh, staff members working in the mobility offices in the university and other um, academic staff. Uh, a toolkit of tools for setting up virtual um, exchange initiatives and a strategic framework for decision makers at the university to start working on uh, institutional strategies for virtual exchange. It's fine, Sara, anything you would like to add as general project description? Um, so these are the scenarios that we are working on. Sara, well, Sara is work, works at Uni Collaboration. She leads uh, on uh, uh, well, this activity is led by Unimod, but she is among the most experienced partners in this project. So I would leave the floor to you to discuss about this. Okay, so. Um... This is um, a list of scenarios we, we have reached after quite um, I mean, um, long internal discussions as, as it has been quite demanding and difficult to classify and could categorize um, integration scenarios for universities. So, uh, but in the end with the other partners, uh, we, we came out with this suggestion 
That is, uh, the first scenario is having virtual exchange as a preparatory or follow-up activity to physical mobility. And this is, of course, blended mobility, an example of blended mobility. The second scenario is, is when, for instance, NICE, the NICE project um, Francesca was telling you before, was describing before, when virtual exchange is an intertwined component um, um, connected uh, to a physical mobility, or virtual exchange as a standalone learning activity when, when it is offered as, as an activity in itself. Um, fourth scenario is when virtual exchange is a component of a course, either a traditional course or an online course. There has been some debate on other options, uh, for which though we feel that uh, the, the, the time is not ripe yet, and so it might be for the next future, uh, for example, considering virtual exchange as an opportunity for internship or trainship, as well as virtual exchange as an opportunity for staff development. So these uh, latter two scenarios will be somehow described in the report we are elaborating right now, uh, but as, as hints and input for the future for other options to consider. And um, these scenarios um, are basically aimed at uh, showing and illustrating in, in clear and very easy terms to universities, what are the potential of virtual exchange and what institutions can actually do with virtual exchange. That is why each scenario is, is completed by the description of some case studies, which have been uh, selected out of a list of, of uh, cases we have been working on um, to, um, explain in, in even clearer uh, terms um, what these scenarios mean and what, what are the main challenges as well you need to consider in case you are, um, you are aiming at implementing this kind of, of uh, um, virtual exchanges. Um, so you will soon um, see uh, the, the, the output, which will be an a report on blended mobility integration scenarios. And um, the, the report should be ready by the end of September, right, Christina? So it will be released immediately before the training um, we, are, we are working. Um, Christina, I don't know if you want to move on to the next slide. Yes, I have a slide about the training yeah. as well. Well, as a key so, announcement. Yeah, the, the, our activity, the frames team activities on the training will start immediately after the issuing of the report. So as of the end of September, we will be working on the training, meaning that we will first have a pilot training with internal staff, 12 staff, 10 to 12 staff from partner higher education institutions. And then remember, we have three universities in the project. Um, so we will first pilot with them a training which will see us as a uni collaboration um, coordinate as coordinator um, and supported by sharing perspectives as uh, the training will also consider the ready-made approach to uh, virtual exchange uh, which is something like quite different from the class to class virtual exchange we have seen um, and the training is purposely addressed to not, not, not just to teaching staff, but we have made it clear to partners as well that it is essential that IRO staff and related offices, such as the career offices as well, educational offer units, and um, of course, mobility officers are, are involved um, because it is, it is precious that um, sort of a teamwork is established for a successful uh, virtual exchange implementation at higher education level. And the training will be the classical training we offer as uni collaboration and enables staff participating in it to have an idea of what a virtual exchange is all about, to, about what students experience when they participate in a virtual exchange as there are both asynchronous as well as synchronous activities planned. Um, so the pilot will be 
end of September, October, then there will be a, a revision of, of what we have done during the training so as to be ready in end, end of January, February uh, to have a second round of training, which will be open to institutions from outside uh, the consortium. And so you're all invited to attend it in case you're interested, you will receive announcements on, on that through Unimed, I suppose, mainly. And that's it. I don't know whether there is any question or if Christina wants to add anything. Thank you, Sadam. If it didn't. Yeah, this is basically what we are working on. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments or suggestions, especially on the scenarios, I think this would be really useful for us at, at this stage. I think it's been quite difficult to define those scenarios, even if now at the end they are pretty simple. Uh, and there has been a lot of discussion, perhaps because it's always difficult to categorize initiatives. So there will also be a, like an outlier a list of cases of universities doing extraordinary kind of exchanges which, which cannot be categorized under those scenarios. So there is always a space for innovation, yeah. let's say. Uh, for example, I mean, what I really like from this these project is that, I mean, you can also see examples of um, institutions approaching virtual exchange, not for the traditional disciplines, but also for arts um, uh, disciplines, which are not usually considered as the main target of, of a virtual exchange activity. And this is quite useful. And another thing I really like from this report, which I do believe is unique and is building upon what has already been done with other projects on virtual exchange, is that um, you look at the mainly the accreditation, or you look at how these virtual exchanges were accredited, um, um, providing some hints on what you can do and the discussion you need to have then internally, of course, in order to have these activities accredited. And um, another point is that you will see, well, while reading the report, that um, it is very difficult to categorize virtual exchange and somehow the same virtual exchange uh, project can be a hybrid model, um, which well fits into more than one of these scenarios. And that is what um, um, was mainly a challenge for us because for instance, in the beginning, we also considered separating the um, scenarios so has to have virtual exchange in preparation uh, during and after the mobility. But then we decided to sort of combine all these um, blended um, examples of virtual exchange being either before, during, or after the mobility exchange. Um, I don't know whether you have any, any questions or if you're interested in anything in particular. Yeah, I, I do have a question, please. Mm -hmm. Oops. Please go ahead. <laughs> Oh, well, very simple. Just say I don't understand if the, the results of the content involved in your activity or a more general uh, ability, and if there are specific programs that you have to agree between different universities, or just so we, the people who devise uh, the kind of activity, or also if there is some specific content. Uh, um, okay. Um, what do you mean by specific content for the project, for the virtual exchange project, you mean, or? Yes, it was just a clarification question. I mean, if you if I want to use, for example, in my university of a specific uh, course, uh, so what in the, when you say capacity building on uh, multiplication, method, I mean, uh, then you have to decide a specific activity with a specific content because you have to integrate in a course uh, or just uh, in, uh, this is a collaborative decision between different universities, just one teacher, just to find capacity building and decide to apply this kind of a template in his course. For okay, example. so uh, 
first of all, uh, it will be very useful uh, if you have a look at the examples because they show how um, there are various approaches. And second, um, um, internal discussion and involvement of the various units is essential to find out the way which is more suitable for your university to categorize and to accredit the virtual exchange. For instance, there are universities where um, I mean, new courses are developed, um, like sort of general, general transversal courses where virtual exchange can fit for it to be accredited. In some other institutions, I mean, the idea is to um, uh, to work on how to accredit uh, the uh, virtual exchange component, which is part of a course. Um, in, so there are various approaches, and that's the main reason why, one of the main reasons why we, we highly recommend that um, various staff is trained on virtual exchange. Otherwise, you, you can be very motivated, but then you, you sort of find some hinders and entrances because the top management, the administration offices don't know and don't have a cue of what it is all about and how to consider these activities. So um, I'm, I'm, I do know I've not fully replied to your question, but this is mainly because I mean, there is uh, one thing is um, um, classification and all the hints we can provide. One thing is then the internal integration and implementation at higher education level. Um, yeah, so. Okay, thank you. And no, one, one more thing I wanted to add. You mentioned capacity building. That was an extraordinary example like DIRMED, the project from Unimed. Um, about um, virtual exchange can also, it is very flexible. It can also fit into other uh, project categories as well, like NICE was a strategic partnership. Um, you can have virtual exchange like a summer school within a broader initiative. Um, I, I here uh, make reference to specifically to the European context. If you know there are the European universities, virtual exchange can be a tool to implement, to be implemented within virtual um, European universities. So uh, even in terms of projects, um, there are now these uh, BIPs and, and uh, which are also open to partner um, is, uh, countries uh, that is outside Europe. And BIPs can have, uh, for the way the year structure can have a virtual exchange component. So there are various ways to approach it. And so what do you think is the responsibility of the single teacher in this uh, project? Uh, well, I mainly believe, and uh, correct me, Francesca, if I'm wrong, that the main responsibility for teaching staff implementing um, and designing a virtual exchange is finding a partner uh, with, with which to work well. Because remember that um, I mean, structuring a virtual exchange requires Lot, lots of work with the partner institution. Um, so I, I would recommend that, um, I mean, the partner is chosen um, um, considering various aspects first. Then second, um, um, I mean, also sometimes involving students may, may, may be a challenge and Francesca can, can confirm that because it is um, something new for students as well. Um, and, and motivating them to take part in a virtual exchange can, um, can, can take some time and showing them the advantages and the benefits they will, they will have in participating in it. And then, of course, there is extra work, but I think it is sort of a proportion. The more your university is involved in it, the less your work is on a virtual exchange because most of the work in terms of administrative stuff and so on will be carried out by the relevant units and also in terms of accreditation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I have a question, please. It's actually uh, not within the scope of our meeting, but it's related. Uh, 
it seems the situation is still uh, still dangerous in many countries. Do you have any idea about the preparation of the ministries of education? I'm not talking about the universities. I'm talking about uh, elementary schools, preparatory and high schools. Uh, do they have any preparation in case and if there is a new attack of COVID, have they done any preparation uh, so all students will be equally having the opportunity for education? Is there anything like this in Europe? Um, well, I can, I can tell you what I know. Um, and Francesca or Fran Christina, if you have any, any other details, just feel free to add. Um, I think that within Europe, the perception I have is that uh, they are desperately hoping that, um, I mean, they want physical mobility to take place soon. Um, so um, this is a must and, and they want um, uh, sort of um, keep the online um, teaching as the remote hypothesis in the last. And this is also confirmed if, if you had a look at the Erasmus Plus guide, um, I mean, um, this is the impression I got, and, and this is confirmed by various um, uh, chats I had, with mainly with national agencies. In terms of preparation of ministries, there are some ministers of education which are sort of trying to get into, like the Netherlands is working on it, um, and uh, Germany is working on it. Uh, but this remains a um, national approach, and this is also confirmed by the fact that virtual exchange, although uh, this was the term um, on which we worked for quite a lot, even within uh, the Erasmus Plus virtual exchange initiative, is, um, is named differently in, in, in the future programs of uh, the Dutch ministry and of the German uh, ministry. Um, <coughs> I see that um, I mainly work with national agencies and NEOs, and they see the interest in there is there, and they are supporting us. But um, um, I feel there is no uh, yet no um, overarching um, training in terms of uh, um, higher um, at higher level, uh, European and national level. No overarching training on on um this approach um and they feel it is mainly left to the institutions um yeah this is my my personal perception thank you yeah i agree that there is a lack of uh well there is no overarching coordination uh also there's this um, digital education action plan, uh, which is this renewed European policy initiative to support uh, uh, all the member states, let's say, and digital education in, in the digital age. So ministries of higher education in, in the member states in Europe are supposed to build on this European high level policy strategy. But yes, I agree with Sarah. Then, when it comes to the uh, countries, then there are uh, yeah many differences in approaches and initiatives. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, ciao. <laughs> Hello. It's always so nice when Hello. there are kids around. <laughs> Well, I think that we are also running a little bit out of time. Uh, I would like to thank all the speakers. And uh, Francesca, do you have any final comments? Uh, or... hey. <laughs> uh, no, it's been really interesting um, hearing also about your experiences and questions. And um, yeah, look forward to hearing more. I'm always contactable through Unimed or at my email. Francesca.helm at Unipidi. And um, thank you, thank you for inviting me, Christina. Thank you, thank you, Francesca, for all your time and all the work that you're doing and all the enthusiasm <laughs> that you have been put into virtual exchange in the last 20 years, which is really bringing to 
extraordinary results. Good, I wish you a good summer break. Thank you all. And uh, I'll see you next month for the next conversation. Yeah, Bye. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Ciao, Sara. Grazie. Bye. Ciao. Thank you. Bye.